Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna show you how to create a tumbler that was inspired by this wrapping paper here. Now, if you caught my video from last week with the Secret Santa collab, I wrapped Vanessa's cup in this particular wrapping paper and I just absolutely love it. If you look really closely, there's some like kind of shiplap, sort of birch wood thing going on in the background here. And we've got some beautiful winter greenery as well as some gold accents. And I just absolutely love this wrapping paper. It's my favorite from this season and I'm excited to make a cup with it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. You're gonna see all the products listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. you guys so as usual i'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that i've already spray painted with a flat white spray paint i didn't even spray paint it very well uh you're not going to need to with what we're doing for this project i'm using just regular blue painters tape i think this is like one inch tape and i'm going to place this along my top rim it's imperative that i get this first line completely straight up against the rim because it's going to kind of be like the true north for all my other lines and keeping them straight. I'm going to use a regular pencil here to just draw a line right up against the tape as my guide. All right and then once I get that first line drawn I'm going to remove my tape and reapply it against the line that I just drew with my pencil. I'm going to repeat that process all the way down the side of my cup. What we're trying to create here is the illusion of like shiplap sort of. Um, if you wanted to forego these lines and just do the dry brush painting technique that I'm going to show later in the video, you could also do that and get a similar look. I just kind of wanted like a wood plank look for the background on this. So that's why I'm doing this. And it really doesn't take too much time to do it this way. Much quicker than my old shiplap video where you had to like stack the pencil on the Legos and stuff. I don't know, if you wanna see that older video, I'll link it in the description box. But anyway, this way is pretty quick and I think the lines turn out just fine, especially for a design like this. So once we get our lines all drawn with the pencil, we're gonna start on our painting technique. I've got some flat black spray paint that I'm just going to spray onto my parchment paper here. And I've got a few chip brushes. I'm just gonna start with the black because I don't, I want, I'm probably gonna cover up most of the black. I'm just using this to create some depth and dimension and we're gonna run our dry brush through that black spray paint and kind of just go back and forth on the cup in straight lines along with the lines that we just drew, okay? The reason I'm using spray paint as opposed to acrylic paint for this step is because it dries faster, all right? It dries really, really quick, which is kind of what you want when you're gonna be layering up a different paint because we don't want it to get muddled. All right, so I'm just going all the way around kind of in a staggered random pattern. Also make sure to get a little bit on your bottom there to integrate that into the design as well. All right, and then once I'm happy with the amount of kind of like black lines and smudges that I've added, I'm going to go in with a clean chip brush with some white acrylic paint. I also grabbed some gray spray paint that I'm going to kind of throw in there for some extra depth and dimension. And what we're trying to do is just layer different textures and shades to create an overall look of this like rustic wood plank kind of background, okay? I'm going to let this initial layer dry for just a few minutes and then I'm going to come back with some gray acrylic paint and some more white acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna repeat those same steps until I get a look that I'm happy with and that I've covered any kind of harsh lines from my pencil drawing from earlier, 
okay? The reason I let it dry in between these two moments is because, again, I don't want it to get all muddled and blended together. It didn't take long to dry. I just kind of walked away for a few minutes. But all in all, this is a really simple and easy paint technique. The whole painting portion took me like less than 10 minutes okay I'm gonna let my paint dry for probably about three or four hours depending on the heat of your workspace you want this to be completely dry to the touch and then I'm gonna move on to my first coat of epoxy this first coat is about 30 milliliters of amazing quick coat from Illumilite this is their fast drying epoxy all right, and I don't think I used all 30 milliliters, but I used quite a bit because there was a lot of texture to this paint, okay? Um, I let that dry for about three to four hours before we moved on to the next step. So for my next step, I need to create and print the winter greenery that I'm going to be using in our pattern today. I've got Google Docs open, and I'm first going to go to File, Page Setup, and I'm going to change all the margins to zero and I'm going to select A4 for our paper size. Once I've got my page set up, I've got my images over here on my desktop already downloaded to my computer. I will have a link down below in the description box on where you can find this exact image pack. It came with a lot of different images, <laughs> and we're just going to use a few of them here today. So the first one I want to use is this really cute mistletoe. And if you right click on it, you can select the size option to see exactly how big this is in inches. I don't want these images to be more than three inches. Also, when I have the image selected, I'm going to change the um, page break option there to the second option in the middle. And I'm going to change the drop down menu to zero. Um, then I'm going to right click and click copy and then click off of my image or unselect it. And then I'm going to right click again and select paste. So I'm going to copy and paste three of these. I'm going to do the same thing for the holly. So let's slow it down a bit. So here we just dragged and dropped our holly onto our Google Doc here resized it kind of roughly to the size that we want okay then i'm going to crop the edges of my image the reason i want to crop it is so i can get it all the way close to the edge of my paper okay so to do that you want to go up to the top here i have to click on these three little dots then click the square option this is the option to crop and then we'll just click and drag these black boundary lines to crop out all the extra space so that we can get it all the way close to the edge of our paper here okay and then once i have it cropped to the way i want i'm going to um, hit enter on my keyboard okay then see those three little options at the bottom of our image we're going to select the middle one then we're going to select zero margin from the drop down on the options on our selected image here okay once I have it sized to the size I want, I'm going to right click the image and select copy, then click off my image to deselect it, right click on my page and select paste. I'm going to do that. I'm going to paste it three, <laughs> two other times, sorry. So I end up with three hollies, okay? Out of all my images, I printed three of each of five different elements. I did the holly, the mistletoe, these little berries in two different berry options that they had. I did another little greenery leafy option and then a couple different pines as well. Okay, so I filled up my whole sheet. I think in total I had like 20 images or something and they were all sized around three inches each. And that seemed to be plenty for my 20 ounce skinny tumbler. You may want to do more or less, okay? But I would recommend just sticking to like four or five different elements because I think if you got way too many different elements arranged on there, it would just look a little too busy, okay? I also selected one of the wreaths that came with this image set and I sized the wreath at 4.5 inches wide, okay? Um, that 4.5 inches is just enough for the 20 inch, or excuse me, for the 20 ounce tumbler 
for it to be big enough across to kind of balance well, as well as fit a decal through the center of it. And you're going to see what I mean later, because I am going to put a cute little merry and bright decal in the center of the wreath that we're going to do as well. So I'm going to add my wreath to our page in the same way. Okay. And then once we have all the elements that we want <laughs> on our page, we're ready to print. Now there's a couple things that you need to double check on before you print. We're going to go over that. So when we're ready to print, I'm going to go up to file print and then we're going to check all the little options here to make sure we have everything correct. So you want to click more settings and then make sure A4 is the paper size selected in this drop down menu. Then click select system dialog for your printing. Go to preferences, photo printing. Um, on mine, I select the uh, luster option for the paper, A4 size for the paper size, print quality high click apply, then print. Now your print settings might be a little bit different. Again, I'm using clear water slide for an inkjet printer. Okay. I will link the one that I'm using down below. And then I sealed this five times with a very light coats of Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss paint. Okay. Got them all sealed up and now we're going to apply our water slide. I will link a video down below where I go really into depth on this process. I didn't go over too many details in this video just because I've covered this so many times before on the channel. So if you need some extra help with your water slide, let me know in the comments. Also check out the linked videos that I have in the description box um, just so you can get some extra help there. Anyway, <laughs> now we're ready to apply our sealed water slide images onto our cup. I've got some room temp water here, and I'm just going to soak these until they lift off of their backing paper. I'm going to apply my wreath first because this is going to be the focal point of my design. So as soon as that water slide lifts off of its paper backing in the water, I'm just going to transfer it over to my cup and slide it off of the backing sheet onto my tumbler and then use a silicone makeup brush to kind of squeegee out all the excess water and smooth out any wrinkles. Uh, you wanna avoid touching the surface of your water slide too much, and you also wanna avoid letting it dry out too quickly. Sometimes if we just remove all the excess water as quickly as possible, the water slide will tend to crack because it dries out too fast because it's going to retract a little bit or shrink as it's drying and if it's too dry while it's shrinking it, it'll crack a little bit okay so just be mindful of that all right i'm just gonna blot off some of these extra water droplets here and then we'll move on to the remainder of our images okay and i'm just gonna cut these out with my scissors from the uh, full sheet that we had printed here and drop them directly into the water. I'm only going to drop in a few at a time. All right, and I'm going to apply these exactly how I did the wreath. And I'm really just kind of winging it as far as placement goes. I suppose if you wanted to kind of lay these out in a pattern first before you place them on your cup, you could do that. But I just winged it and I liked how it looked. Um, once they're on the cup, though, you can't really move them around too much. I mean, you could slide them on a little bit here and there, but for the most part, once you have them put, you know, once you have them on there, they got to kind of stay put because the more we move them around, the more we risk, you know, ripping and cracking and things like that. All right. So I just repeat that application process for each image all the way around the cup. Make sure that your cup is glossy before you put these on. If you need to sand at all before you apply these, you can sand. Just make sure that you restore the gloss and shine with a clear gloss spray paint first, um, and then you can apply these. You don't want to apply clear water slide to a dull or rough surface because it will show through in the end after we epoxy over it. All right. So after I got all my images on here, I just touched up any kind of dull areas with a Sharpie. You don't have to seal the marker. 
Um, and then after about a half hour or so of these drying, you could just epoxy right over this. This second coat of epoxy was about 20 milliliters. I used just regular epoxy this time so I could let it dry overnight because I wasn't gonna do any more work for the day. Uh, and then we were ready for the next step. All right, so next we're ready to add our gold details. You can see on the wrapping paper, it's got all these fun little like gold dots. They also did little gold doodles of different greenery elements through all the blank spaces. I opted to not do that <laughs> because I'm not really good at drawing with these pens very well, so I didn't want to mess it up. So I just did some of the little like line details and little polka dots that they have over and around the berries. I really love this gold pen. I will link it down below. It's from Amazon and it's just the perfect gold. It almost looked like gold vinyl. It was that vibrant, absolutely perfect. All right, and so you'll just see I'm making little gold dots here and there. This will just add some extra like interest and just fun detail. I even put some little lines through the center of these holly leaves and I just think it's really cute. <laughs> all right, so after I added in all my little gold marker details, I was ready to apply my decal to the center of that wreath. Now, I know I use this decal a lot for my Christmas designs. I've used it in two other videos, but it's just so perfect and it fit perfectly in the middle of this wreath. I couldn't help it. I just couldn't think of anything that I liked better than this. So I'm whatever, I'm using it. Um, <laughs> so you just wanna center this decal the best you can in the center of the wreath. Uh, it is going to overhang a little bit onto like the leaves of the wreath, so it'll overlap a bit, but I don't really care. I, I kind of like that look. And once I got my decal applied, I was ready for what is now my third coat of epoxy. All right, and after I applied this coat, I let it dry for about 8 to 12 hours, and then I sanded my rim like I normally do with my normal sanding routine, and then I applied... Uh, what was actually my final coat and in my actual final coat I did use some UV enhanced epoxy from Illumilite that will help keep all those colors nice white and bright for years to come all right uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about with sanding the rim I encourage you to watch my video from earlier this week I will link it in the description box where I go really into depth about why and how I sand and when. Um, I think you'll find it really helpful if you struggle with finding a good sanding routine for yourself. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just love how this design turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.